Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everyone, this is Rob, your host at RV Talk Radio. Nice to have you. Been kind of an interesting week. <laughs> Busy. The big part here is uh, Sherry's been gone all week, so I've been batching it. And <laughs> about halfway through the week, I start getting bummed out and depressed. And it's like, I want Sherry back. And so uh, I just work and work and work and kind of just try to pass the time till she gets back. You know, she does a contract work for about a week and then uh, heads uh, flies out of state and then comes back and so it's it's a good deal for us and stuff but it's <laughs> it's um, life's too short to be apart that's the best way I can describe it but uh so this week I thought I'd make the theme of the show a little bit like uh, uh, your part you know let's talk about our partners friends uh, acquaintances that are are being with you or talking about your partner basically or and friends uh, that are involved together in RVing so I want to kind of talk about a little bit of uh, Sherry and I and how we deal with each other and uh, uh, the new friendships we've been uh, getting along the way kind of like to talk about that a little bit I do have a guest coming in this week. His name is Aaron Jemerson. He uh, has a new site called Three Tails RV. And I want to introduce him because he's kind of new in the, in the scene. They're going full timing, while well, they're full time in their RV now. And they're getting ready to hit the road in the fall. It's pretty much like me and Sherry did last year. And uh, speaking of friends, uh, we've gotten to know them pretty well. And actually, he's been <laughs> helping me out with a lot of my sites, um, troubleshooting and, and uh, experimenting with new ideas. Uh, at the same time, he's got some new things he's doing. So in return, we kind of help him to work the bugs out on things that he's working on. So like I said, today's show, we're going to talk about friends and family got a few things to make sure that we remind you about don't forget RV Talk Radio has a newsletter and the way that works is if you just go to our site at rvtalkradio.com and off to the right hand side you'll see a place where you can put your email address in for a free newsletter now our newsletter is automated which means that just each time we have a show anything we make a new post um, once a week if there's something new it'll send a newsletter out to kind of let you know what we have going on so if we do have a uh, articles and announcements too they'll come across there and it's free and you can unsubscribe at any time it's automated and I promise you it works properly. <laughs> you won't be stuck with junk mail. Anyway, so if you'd like to be notified whenever we have a new show, basically a few days after we do have a show, it, it will send a newsletter out to our folks and saying, hey, there's a new episode to go see if you want to go see it. And you can click on it right from the email. Kind of saves you the trouble of having to monitor us. Always want to remind you, our show is always on Monday morning. We try to launch it at 5 in the morning. If we're late, it's only because I'm stuck editing. And we do make a video version of this show. This show is registered with iTunes and several other podcast directories. We are the real thing, guys. So, if you get a chance, go to RV Talk Radio. Get yourself a newsletter. The next thing I want to let you know about RVTalkRadio.com, if you go to the site... Don't forget to contact us and just just say hello if you like. You can do it in uh, several ways. Uh, you can go to the site, go to the contact page, 
Let us know what's on your mind. If you get some suggestions, if you have a product or service you're interested in putting on the show, just give us a holler and we'll try to get back to you in a timely manner. You can also get the watch the video version of this show and just leave comments below. And if you just want to send an email to me personally, you can send it to Rob, R-O-B, at rvtalkradio.com, and we'd love to hear from you. So, get on over to rvtalkradio.com, get your free newsletter, say hello, and check out some old episodes. <laughs> it's lots of stuff. I think... Uh, Boy, we're coming up on a year pretty soon. It won't be too long. So, some of our older, you know, of course, when you're new, it's kind of fun. If with that, you know, and let's talk about old episodes. You can kind of see how maybe we've evolved trying to find our rhythm. And uh, so, if you want to have some fun, get a smile and see us kind of struggle as we're first starting, uh, figure out how we're going to do our show. Uh, start from episode one on and, uh, and, uh, we, we do have some great shows, but there's kind of funny as we're kind of figuring out our method. So, glad to have you. Give us contact. Next week, I'm going to try to get an interview set up between the makers and developers uh, and marketers of Go Mechanic. And Go Mechanic, their website's at gomechanic.us, not .com, US. And they're the ones that developed the Go Mechanic application for your phone. And what I like about it is it's not just find a mechanic. It's Go Mechanic is finding people to come to you. So if you're young and old folks, sometimes you go, ah, oh, I don't need something like that <laughs> You get parked at an RV park, it all settled in, and some you discover you got something you got to fix. Um, and you can have different types of services come to you. I know there's also mobile RV folks that come out, but there's also, you may have chipped glass, you may have, may one just do an oil change. More and more cities have people that will come to you. And that's awesome, and, and especially if you're a senior, like we're getting to be just certain things that you'd just rather have somebody else come out and do for you. And this application is designed for RVs and auto. And so not just your RV park, but this, uh, just in your travels. If you're stranded somewhere and you need a mechanic or tire service or glass service to come to you, whether it's automotive or RV, that's what this application is for. I highly recommend it. I have it on my phone. Works really well. <clears throat> All you have to do, sorry, is let the uh, application know uh, where you're at and type in what kind of service you're looking for. And it will <clears throat> look in the general area that where you're at. So, excuse me. So, once again, you get a chance. Uh, go to the Google store and check out Go Mechanic. It's worth your while and you'll sure be glad you had it if something goes wrong. Check it out, guys. Go Mechanic. My first story I kind of want to share with you is um, in the theme of family and friends is my week this week. Which is like, oh, great. We get to hear Rob's personal life. Yep. And so, Sherry's been gone since last, well, for almost a week. And we've been married for a long time. Oh, like 35 years. Plus, we met each other when we were seven years old. And actually dated as kids and did things together. We grew up together. So, I know. Leave it to Beaver family type thing. Anyway, so uh, don't tell anybody, but kind of love her. And so when she's gone, it's like, oh great! You would think, you would think I would like, ooh, ooh, ooh party, that you know, have a good time. 
And it starts out first day or so, it's like, oh, that's kind of cool, I can do anything I want. And, and uh, about 24 hours of going, I can do anything I want. A little longer goes, and I say, boy, I can do anything I want. And I just get bummed out. <laughs> so I just work. I work. I work, work, work. I record. I re work on shows. I'll stay up too late. I'll Skype all night type thing, working on shows. Uh, just I get in the RV, kind of lock myself in, and I swear I just go into a work mode. And that's what I did this time. So what I wanted to tell you about it was kind of funny is uh, I knew I've always wanted to do this, and I knew it was going to be a disaster when I did it, is I wanted to do three different types of videos. And so they're done. I did them. One's about what kind of computers and hardware we use. Another one was about our internet and what kind of internet we use, right, wrong, or indifferent. And then the last but not least, and this was the one that was a disaster as far as making a mess, is our cameras and equipment. <laughs> and uh, I've never consolidated all of our cameras and equipment. And you've heard me talk about it on the show about the kind of stuff we have. And so I took one of the counters that my wife would shoot me if I would have, she would have been home and I laid a towel over it. So everything showed up really well, pulled out every single camera and support equipment we had for that. I, it just, it spilled over like it was a mess. So, uh, so what I did is I let, you know, like I said, laid everything out and started a show. Now I'm pretty much just talking about the show the camera show. The other ones were quick. I got those out in less than 10 minutes. And I did them all in the same night because if I'm going to disrupt this place so much, I'll do all three shows that night. Anyway, but camera one I came out to about like 25 minutes long. I didn't realize how much stuff we have. And then the worst thing is I ordered another camera. So you'll hear me talk about the new G40 Canon uh, camera. And what kind of motivated me to do that is you price, if you get a chance, go to our, watch our videos. We have one called Stillhead Falls and it has bonus material in it. And I know, I know I've kind of talked about this before, but it's got the kind of photography in it that needed a camera that was a little more advanced. And I kind of given that kind of camera up a long time ago and I'm kind of missing it. And Sherry gave me permission to get it. So I finally ordered it and it's, uh, uh, should allow me, it's small enough to still just tote around all uh, where we go, but it has capabilities of doing special shots that sometimes, uh, what we're trying to do with our photography is you know, like, like I said, you can like look at uh, a waterfall and say, Hey, pretty waterfall. Or you can spend some time around the waterfall and look at the special moments, the smelling the roses kind of shots. And you can only do that with certain types of cameras. And you have to be in the mindset of it too, of sharing it and saying, guys, here's some other beauty of that same shot that you probably wouldn't have noticed before. But, um, I've got the camera to show it to you. So that's kind of what was going on. So I went into the work mode, got some really good videos coming out. There's kind of spread out over the few weeks because I don't want this information videos out every single day. I like to spread those out because we like to have the family ones with Sherry and I with RV travel quests and we spread those out. And, uh, <clears throat> Uh, so between now and almost the end of the month, we've got stuff like that coming out. So look forward to videos on what computers we use, what internet we use, our cameras we got. Um, and actually I've released a couple of fluffy videos. Uh, one's about, um, being in the park in Central Oregon. And we got another one with, uh, some shots we did with uh, Deschutes River over in Bend, Oregon. And so a lot of pretty stuff coming out, uh, not necessarily designed to get lots of traffic. It's designed for you to enjoy RVing and the things that we see. And if, if uh, we have to sacrifice uh, uh, 
getting lots of traffic because some people just want news and they want to hear the, you know, <laughs> the soap opera of, of RV living and it's, you're not going to get it from us. So sorry, we're just here to show you what RVing is all about and the lifestyle and, and, and give you a good idea of what things look like where we're at. So anyway, I hope you enjoy all that stuff. Some new things we got uh, in stock here that came in that we uh, wanted to talk about is I actually have another video coming out. <laughs> it's about it's about poop. Yep, poop. And um, we actually kind of address, and I'm going to address it here too, is the first part of the show talks about taking care of your pets and using a poopy bag. And... Um, the big part about that is I want to make sure that we all need to get in the habit of doing that. It's not going to kill you and, and it's good to stretch a little and reach down there and take care of that and keep poopy bags in your back pocket for your pet. And what I'm trying to do is quit, try, don't ruin it for all of us. If we're all going to these areas and we all have pets and stuff, we're all going to produce poop. And so... Uh, I'm sure it's very irritating for the RV park uh, maintenance folks uh, if you guys are not picking up after your pets. Uh, I always do with Cinder and um, just do it guys because then pretty soon some of these RV parks are just going to get stricter and stricter and we won't be able to have our pets and um, it's already, I mean... I don't know if you've been to the Redwoods, but if you get down there and try to go down the trails or go around anywhere, you'll find that there's signs now saying no pets. Not not just pets on the leash, no pets, period. So I guess what, guess, <laughs> so I wonder why that happened. So just saying, folks, pick up after your pets. But the other thing I wanted to talk about was <laughs> in that same category is we just got a new waste tank for our RV. The type of waste tank that we got is called a Toten Store uh, with wheels, so they're a little more expensive when you got the four wheels. Uh, the back wheels are fixed, the other ones are pivotable type of wheels in the front. This thing, I, I we got the 25 gallon, and the thing is built like a Sherman tank. And so I'll give one kudos for the first thing is I ordered it from Amazon and I didn't have to assemble it. It was already assembled. Like, yay. The only thing I kind of had to put together is you get this little package of, of caps and, and, and you got to get attach them to the tank and stuff so you don't lose your caps when you're taking them on and off, which I appreciate because whenever I get something that's got a cap on and all that stuff and you take them off and they have not attached, I tend to leave them where I took them off. Uh, just like it's it's a good thing I have an attachment for my gas cap to my truck because there's a good once or twice where I've driven down the road and looked and go, oh, geez, my uh, my cap's dangling out there and, and the door's still open, so <laughs> it happens. Well, anyway, so this is designed that way. So the new Toten store, I did a video about it and take a look at it. It's beefy. I went with 25 gallons. I'm kind of thinking maybe I should have went smaller, but... Um, it barely fits the back of my truck without interfering with the trailer. Of course, I'll find out for sure when we get on the road again, which is next week. And I got that thing back there. Um, I think it clears. <laughs> it's just real close of clearing the hitch uh, for the fifth wheel. But um, I'm finding it's... I, I've been avoiding it. I didn't want to get one. I was hoping that... Um, but I, you know, we may as well have the equipment. I, it's, we've been at this one particular spot for like six weeks and, uh, uh, I have a 50 gallon holding tank and we're kind of pushing it a little bit. So I thought it would be nice to kind of relieve it. So we were borrowed another person's 10 gallon tank and it's an old one. They didn't have all the attachments and stuff. And we did relieve the tank a little bit with that and took it over to a dump thing over in his back guy's backyard that we're staying in and one of the hoses popped during the process and it was just mickey mouse and so i i want it's like darn it i've got to get one of these it's no more of this so we took like 
two runs over there, just kind of relieved the tank a little bit and said, stop, no more. I'm not doing this till I have the right equipment. So got on Amazon, it's like, that's it. We're getting our own tank. So it's here. It's, uh, we're going to actually, uh, when Sherry gets back, we're going to go through the process of relieving the tanks a little bit more. Maybe I'm not sure yet. Cause now I think about it, if we're going to roll in a couple days, uh, maybe I just wait until we get to dump station, but we'll see. Uh, it'd be kind of interesting to try the new tank so I can at least give you a review of the pros and cons of, of it. So this one is, should be nice. It's high tech. It's kind well, it's built really well. It seems to be engineered really well. So check out the video when that comes out sometime later next week. I had to laugh the uh, Friday of, uh, of this week, actually. I made a video uh, called A Tribute to My Wife Sherry. And uh, I love the comments I got in some of those because I just, I know it sounds silly. Um, I don't, it's not silly, but I don't, I really like my wife. I, I love her. So I miss her. And so by the end of the week, I told you, I just kind of get bummed out and all that. So I thought it'd be really cool to go through all the downloads I had in, from uh, my, I, my phone to Google Photos. And it's like four years back. And I thought, you know, we got all these selfies and really cute things that we've done. Put it together and make a tribute to my wife. So I did. And it came out nice, and it's not too long a video, and uh, it's cute. I, I liked it, and actually got a lot of traffic. I was surprised at how many people watched the video, so <laughs> thank you. Uh, so, like I said, the, the theme of the show was friends and family. So, I can tell you also what's going to happen. Sure, I actually have to pick up Sherry today. Uh, it's Saturday for me. Uh, we have to do the show a little, couple days early. Uh, to get this launched in time for Monday. So <laughs> my wife will come home and of course I don't have all the dishes done and you know, I don't make the bed. I kind of fluff it up and kind of pull the, and uh, so it, so my, my wife's more detail oriented than I am. So the first hour would be organize, 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 get things put in place. That, and, and, and you know, we've been married so long that I could be offended a little bit because I, I couldn't, I didn't keep up as well, but she understands me too. That's part of good relationships, but she likes her RV uh, you know, or if we're at home too, everything in its place. And I'm not as good at that as she is. So <laughs> it just makes me smile, makes me feel like I could have done better. Sorry, but my wife just smiles and says, just let me get it the way I want it and then I'll be happy. It's like, all right, cool. So there you go. Uh, talk about friends and family. Uh, like I said, we're going to have Aaron Jemison on the show here. At, uh, and there's a lot to talk about in this stuff. And I want to talk with him. He's the subject of being one of our friends. Newer friends that we've had. We, uh, we've met a lot of folks. Um, and uh, they've helped us. And we're passing it along or passing it forward, uh, helping other folks too. And, and Aaron's just starting out. He's got a good situation. He's a good guy, very informative. His videos are really nice. Wife is really nice. Laura, I think his wife's name is Lori. And we'll try to get him on the show here if I quit talking so much. But the big thing I wanted to tell you is, um, is the relationship with your partner and especially if you're RVing together it takes a while to develop and we talked about in shows before about about finding your rhythm with each other uh, that's why it's kind of good to do a lot of experimental trips first in your RV before you go full time right away that time this that way you kind of get a chance to work your rhythm between each other because you can't always be in the same rooms together, whether it's bathroom, kitchen, living room. Well, living room you can, but uh, me, I steal the dining room table for this show and other things. So Sherry kind of avoids this table till I'm done with that chore. And 
So the rhythm with your friends and, and, and with your family, and, and especially if you have a partner in an RV, important stuff, and we'll constantly try to talk about that and see if there's anything we can do to help you with your partner in your RV. Of course, you heard last week of a new partner or, or service and resource that we worked on with Good Sam, uh, what they call Good Sam um, Extended Service Plan. And like I said, my obsession is the quick complaining and, and about these folks going out and not having enough money and uh, might even have to do with some of the folks that are out there being accused of e-bagging you might say uh one of the things is i keep saying you gotta have money put aside and you gotta have uh maybe an emergency credit card or something like that but i was really curious about and i, I talked about this before and i still want to keep bringing it up because it's important is if you bought a used RV from another party, a third party, could you actually insure, not insure it, but kind of set up a warranty against the maintenance, not the rig itself. If the rig is, you can use regular insurance to cover the rig. We're talking maintenance, like if your microwave goes out, or if you blow a spring or have a jack go out, um, break an axle, <laughs> that could be devastating. Uh, and all the things that can go wrong, whether um, it could be your air conditioning, window go coming out, a leak, who knows? Uh, is there something out there that that you could set up to, to protect your rig from emergency repairs? And it can get devastating. And you guys know this, but we uh, set up a, um, a, a direct line to... Good Sam extended service plan pro, uh, people. So if you go to our site or in the description of this show, we have a link that goes to RV Travel Buddy and it's for the Good Sam um, folks. And you can, and, and if you do this, just to get a quote to find out how much it would cost to get a service plan like that for your rig. And, and, and even if you have a new rig, you should have this because don't forget on a new uh, rig, a lot of times your extended warranty is only good for the first year, sometimes two years. Anyway, so uh, if you go to RV Travel Buddy, hit the button or go to the link on this show for the Good Sam extended <laughs> service plan um, and get a quote, guess what? <laughs> the quote's free, but you all can also get a $10 Camping World gift certificate. And <laughs> I don't care what you think. <laughs> Anytime I get a gift certificate for uh, Camping World is a good thing for me because I'm going there all the time. I've, uh, I've always had good luck with those folks. They always have some clever devices that I didn't think I needed for my RV. But <laughs> anyway, that's a cool store. Anyway. When you get a chance, and if you've been thinking about it, and you need protection for your RV and vehicle too, by the way, uh, they also um, branch off into towing services and stuff like that. Please go get a quote at least. The quote is free, and and you get a gift card out of it for ten bucks for Camping World. It's so worth it. So go to the website, RV uh, Travel Buddy, RV Talk Radio. RV Travel Quest, or the show in the description, all have the resource of going to get a free quote for Good Sam Extended Service Plan for your RV or vehicle. Check it out, guys. Did you know that... We have actually two new resources we created at RV Travel Buddy. One is called RV360Video.com and that site is designed to post all of our 360 videos from now on to that site because there's a lot of folks that are kind of like, it's like a group of people that just like to do 360s. So we thought it'd be you know good for us to put 
the resources of all of our 360s in one place. And of course, you can see them on our channel on YouTube. The other site that we have that we just kind of tweaked and with the help of um, Aaron Jimerson, which uh, we were talking about earlier, uh, we just tweaked in a site that I had that needed tweaked called rvsocialnetwork.com. And what it is is uh, a community that feels a lot like Facebook without all the craziness in it. So it's totally RV oriented. And when we detect that there's someone not RV oriented in there, then we'll uh, have them move on. So if you get a chance, go check out rvsocialnetwork.com. That's rvsocialnetwork.com. You can join and sign up for free. You can just use your Facebook login if you like. And <laughs> I'm cooking, <laughs> making coffee in the background. Sorry. Anyway, uh, uh, it's kind of fun. You can put videos and music and pictures in there and uh, set up a groups, whatever you like to do. It's a neat little site, uh, easy to use. It's like I said, just an RV community. So if you'd like to join rvsocialnetwork.com, go check it out. Uh, there's a link to it in our description below. And uh, anything else we have new uh, might be listed down there. Uh, I, another site we have that I haven't talked too much about is also called northwestcustomimages.com, which is a place where we put a lot of our still photos, which you don't see a lot of, and other people can put their still photos in there, and it's kind of for stock images that people might want to sell their images. And you can actually set up a free account there and actually sell your photos there. And uh, it's kind of a growing community there also, too. So there you go. Uh, the new RV360videos.com. We got rvsocialnetwork.com and northwestcustomimages.com go check them out alrighty guys let's get on to our interview with Aaron Jimerson hi this is Rob from RV Talk Radio and as promised I have Aaron and Lori Jimerson from Three Tails RV with us today for interviewing and how are you guys doing we're doing good how about you Oh, not too good. I'm sure glad that we finally uh, had a chance to get you on the show. Uh, before I do start, I do want to kind of um, let you know how I met Aaron and his wife. Is we've uh, kind of been collaborating a little bit. They've been very helpful with helping us get some of our websites uh, going and working and uh, troubleshooting. <laughs> a lot of troubleshooting, which I really appreciate. And so we became pretty good friends, and, and as I've uh, had a chance to watch his stuff, I've actually noticed that you guys are really starting to put out some really good videos, and um, you guys, if I understand correctly, you you guys are uh, going to be on the road here pretty soon. So can you kind of tell us a little bit about what your status is in the RVing world right now? Well, right now we are friend's house we're parked in his driveway we've been here for 14 months 15 months, 15 months. and we've been doing the what do they call it um urban boondocking <laughs> nothing wrong with that well we decided to do the little house movement in an rv because we've got kids in three different states uh-huh so um this way we can go we can travel and see them without having to stay with them. <laughs> hey, that's what we're going to do, too. So i got to tell everybody know, uh, out there, what kind of RV do you have? We have a 1988 Fleetwood Limited that we picked up used. Uh-huh. And I, I just to kind of bring it up, a lot of uh, during this time before you guys hit the road, I get the impression you guys are doing some renovations and getting it ready for full timing. Is that correct? I've done a, a lot of renovations to the interior of this. We've still got a kind of a list that we're working on still. Uh -huh. um, recently, we built, I did some 
some YouTube videos on the renovation of our galley and kitchen area, mm -hmm. trying to uh, spark some interest in that. Uh, we also converted over to a domestic refrigerator in our RV. Lori was kind of hesitant at first to uh, go ahead and let me attempt that, but <laughs> after we've gotten it in there, she says, well, I think we should do it sooner. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's you always know, an issue. Stuff. I don't have to go to the grocery store every other day. Yeah, that's the one thing I noticed when I was watching your videos. It's like, all right, someone's getting some freezer space out of that. So, uh, yeah, I, I could I could see why you would like that. So your, your refrigerator you put in is uh, totally electric then, right? Correct. Oh, okay. I thought that's what it was, but uh, uh, if you get a chance to see his video, he, they've done a really good job explaining how they took it out and how they put it in. So, uh, and and your channel is listed under Three Tails RV, or is it under your name? Under uh, it's listed under Aaron Jemison, and it's Three Tails RV. Okay, good. We gotta make sure that people can find your channel. And we'll make sure that we have a, a link of, for your channel and your websites, everything uh, in the description. But um, Three Tails RV, and you, that's the number three, right? You don't write it out. No, it's the number three. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Three Tails RV. So, now, how long have you guys been in this RV? 14 months? 16. 16 months. <laughs> and Lori corrected me. <laughs> So, wow, so a year and a half so far. And yes. you, you guys have mentioned that your goal is to try to get on the road this fall? We're trying to get on the road by September 1st. We've got a family event in uh, Missouri that we are going to truck across the... Uh, we're going to go down the coast, go down the west coast, and then cut across on Route 66 en route to the wedding. Gotcha. So, uh, are you guys um, going to be towing? We're going to be towing a 2005 uh, Dodge Durango. Or Dodge Dakota, I'm sorry. Gotcha. This is the tow we're going to use, and it's fully capable of doing that. It's got a uh, switch in there that will override and put it into a neutral um capacity so now that you've gotten this far with your rv is there uh, like any new ideas or changes that you'd make at this point well the one thing with buying a used rv is the uh, insulation factor of the rv in the summertime it gets really really hot in here and in the winter time it's cold mm -hmm. so if there was anything i could have done differently it would have been to uh, basically take everything out of it wrap it with the silver um, insulation and then put uh, different walls in and actually made it a lot more insulator insulation and warmer in here. Yeah. Cooler than, warmer in the summertime or warmer in the winter than the, um, colder, cooler, cooler. cooler in the summertime, warmer in the winter. That think, would be the way to do it. Yeah, gotcha. I think that's a common problem with all of us is, is trying to get enough insulation in these things. Uh, so I know I watched some of your older videos and you guys have had a chance to do some traveling and and doing some uh, I don't know if you did it by your RV or not, but do you guys have like any favorite states or favorite locations that you guys are looking forward to going to or or want to go back to again? Well, one of our favorite places I'd have to say and then it'll probably be completely different for Lori, but I love going over to Oak Harbor and seeing the uh, Deception Pass area. Yeah. She, she, she wants to bail out of Washington, right? <laughs> well, I love the weather. I really do. But it's, I don't like going to work with 4 million other people every day. 
Right. The only thing I really don't like about Washington. Yeah, we had the same problem. Yeah. Um, people's attitudes are a lot different than what they used to be because we've had an influx of, of people coming to Washington State. Mm-hmm. And with that, it's it's just time for us to move on. We've got family out here if we need to come visit. We can roll back out here and, and stay with them. Yeah. So uh, before I forget, though, I do want to, I, 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 I've watched uh, how you guys have been evolving with your videos and stuff. So what's kind of some of your goals and uh, that you have in the future for the videos that you're making? I know that right now you've been doing a lot of do your do it yourself kind of videos and stuff. But uh, I know that you you and I have both talked about some of the things you want to do in the future. And I want to kind of share that with everybody. Mm-hmm. videos that uh, can actually get people involved in some of the travels and understand some of the, the trials and tribulations that go along with that. Uh-huh. And that being said, we're going to be starting a new series on uh, preparation for us getting ready to go so that people can follow along with us as we begin the journey. That'll be good. <laughs> Did you guys got come up with a title for that yet? Um, I can't remember. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, I could remember that. Chronicles of Getting on the Road or something like that. That'd be a... I know we've done something like that before. I know everybody enjoys finding out how everybody kind of prepares to do this stuff. So uh, you guys are both working. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, you don't have to tell us what what you're doing or anything, but uh, I know uh, um, in the future... I know that you might be in, and I, I I know it's kind of early to ask you about this kind of stuff, but you may be actually be checking out work camping a little bit. That's one of our things that we're looking at is uh, we're, we, I have a, a dream of waking up in Yosemite National Park mm. as a work camper and going out and enjoying a cup of coffee and looking at the mountains and the sunrise, sunrise coming up over the mountains. <laughs> And that being your first experience of the day, so can I be your neighbor? Can, can I be your neighbor? <laughs> sure, come on down. <laughs> that sounds, that sounds awesome. <laughs> Only if you're wearing sweaters. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's for sure. So um, now, I know it's a little early yet because you guys are going to be rolling here in in the fall. But uh, so far, do you guys have some favorite electronics or anything in uh, be, that you're going to? be using between now and when you start traveling as far as navigation or uh, any kind of unique devices that you guys are kind of falling in love with that might be a nice tool for for traveling? Well, right now it's kind of open. We haven't really... The only thing that we've done is checked out the websites. We did a preliminary uh, estimation using uh, Google Earth to see how far it was going to be. We've done some estimations on what it's going to cost for gas, but as time changes and the election comes and goes, the gas prices are probably going to wafer a little bit. Um, there's a lot. Of, there's tons of uh, websites out there that you can use that will help with that. Uh, like I said, Google Earth gives gives us an idea, and you can plan out your route from point A, and you can pick different points of interest in between that to point B, and that helps out a lot. And then we went and got the... Uh, Camper's Guide from uh, Camping World. Camping World, so then that gives us another idea of where locations are. And that's going to be one of the topics in the series is uh, the different tools that we use because you, you don't want to just set up a primary site. You also want to have a secondary site mm-hmm. so that you, in case one falls through, you've got a backup plan. You always want to have at least one backup just in case things don't go the way you want it to. <laughs> Yeah, so that that was one of the questions I was going to ask you is is what's some of the things you do uh, prior to what you call, what some people call travel planning? Do you guys have any 
technique down yet that you guys that works good for your family? Um, nothing yet, but uh, there will be a checkoff list that we're going to create, and that will be available on our web page so that people can take that and use that and modify it as to their needs. But it'll be a basic outline of what we use to help get us to our destination. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It seems like Sherry and I keep thinking we're going to do that. And <laughs> I never really get an actual list or checklist done. But um, Well, well Rob, there might be a chance for a collaboration there. Then. Yeah, definitely. So i got to ask you, since you guys have been in your RV for, I think you said, 16 months? Is that right? Yep. Uh, yeah. w- what have been some of your primary issues or challenges? Yeah, just uh, that you ha- showers. Yeah, yeah, showers. Yeah, I can relate to that one. How about you, Aaron? Um, I would say cooking. Yeah, good. We had a lot of different things that we tried with the cooking. Um, we ended up taking out the RV stove and replacing it with a dishwasher, uh-huh. so that we could make things a little bit easier for ourselves. And then when we did that, we had to install a different a new cooktop. And then we had to discover a new way of uh, baking and making food. Ah. And and what was your new way? Convection oven. Ah. <laughs> so now, now you got now you got to learn how to use one of those things, huh? That's been a challenge. <laughs> I know we got one in our RV, and I don't think we've used it more than once or twice because it's we haven't quite figured it out. But uh, it's actually easier than I thought it would be. I just have to watch it closer. Yeah, I've heard that. The, uh, yeah, sometimes. Everything I've heard, cooks, you know, half, half the time they say to cook something. Yeah, I've heard that. So, Well, when you the master it, you can make us a... You, was, say that again? To back up to what Lori was saying was one of the challenges, I find myself asking her probably once or twice a month, if there was one thing about the RV that we could change, what would it be? And what we're doing is we're looking into purchasing a bigger water, hot water heater, hot water heater for the RV, so that we can she can get a little bit longer showers out of the deal. Yeah. So how many gallons are you and guys trying to work up to? Um, right now we have a six gallon, and we're going to move up to a ten. Mm. And with this RV being as it's thirty plus years old. Um, the water heater just isn't as efficient as it could be. Right. So replacing that will be a definite um, life improvement for us. <laughs> so now that you've been in this uh, this uh, journey so far, is there any uh, um, interesting people you've ran, a, ran across yet in the last six months or 16 months since you've started RVing that, that has helped you get along, moved along, you know, for me, it's like uh, lately. It seems like every month I'm meeting very interesting people, and you know, of course, one of the people I've met is obviously you guys too. But I've come across some really interesting folks. Is, has anybody stood out, or a couple of people stood out in the last couple of months that uh, that you kind of like to watch or like to tell people about that help you out? Well, definitely you, <laughs> because you and I have built a, a relationship where we're if we're not in a chat group we're talking about other other things yeah so um Kaylee and josh have had some input on different things and i've tried to help them with some of their uh concerns about their kitchen renovations that they're working on currently oh cool i know i've talked with her a couple times about it Neat. and the scots we've talked back and forth quite a few times too so yeah but we're getting this we're, so, we're getting a little family here mind. Um, so I, I never um, have asked you um, what kind. Of, do you guys have any particular hobbies that you uh, that you do that you're trying to keep and keep doing while you're still uh, while you're in the RV now? Like I don't know. Uh, I know you're doing something with wood. What was that? Um, I actually made something for you guys. Yeah. You just need to get a chip for you. <laughs> I am uh, an avid woodworker. And that's where I get a lot of my uh, creativity when it comes to uh, different renovations of the RV. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I really enjoy the most doing is intarsia. And for people that don't understand what that is, it's uh, small pieces of wood of different um, different species of wood that are different 
shades of color and then you cut them out individually and you make a a uh, piece of art with it. Yeah. And I've seen some and of those pretty cool stuff. I have a bunch of roses on my wall, so I've never been without flowers. <laughs> So is that something you guys can keep doing on the road? That's the uh, that's the plan. I want to be able to do some of that and some other stuff that we can either sell or make for other people as we uh, take the journey along. Yeah. So have you guys considered um, joining any like membership, uh, like RV memberships or clubs or any discount programs uh, between now and when you get on the road yet? We've contemplated several. But most of them are based right here in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. So we've got to find one for nationwide. Because a lot of our family and stuff will be from the Midwest to the West Coast. We've looked at the Thousand Trails, but for the, the amount of places that we want to go to, we'd have to pick up two or three or four different areas to do that. Gotcha. So we're still, we're still looking at it. We haven't really sat down and made a decision on that. Mm -hmm. We're more concerned about getting the RV ready to go than we are about that at this moment. Yeah. So the next question, I'm going to kind of combine a couple questions here, but uh, this is going back to some electronics and things. What kind of communication resources like phones and stuff, internet, television, what do you guys have now and what are you planning on not keeping and maybe getting for the RV that pertains to communication and entertainment? Yeah. You use it, you pay for it. If you don't, you don't have to pay anything. Gotcha. Uh, currently, we have this or Century Link for our internet, which will stay put. We won't obviously take that with us. Mm -hmm. And to be able to keep in touch with family and friends, we use uh, AT and T with our phones. Mm. So you guys have hotspot too, then. Now, one thing I got to ask you about is because of definitely because of the name of your uh, website and your uh, channel is you call it Three Tails RV. So what I want to ask you is, I know I kind of know the answer to this, but I also want to know more about. I believe you have some pets on board, so can you tell us a little bit about your name and and your pets and how everything came together? Yeah. And we, they let us live with them. Uh -huh. We have three dogs. One's name is Daisy. We have a male, and his name is Bud Bud, but we call him Dud Dud. And then we have the sibling, or the, the offspring of them, and her name is Snickers. And the reason why her name is Snickers is because she looks like a Snickers bar. At least that's what we came up with when she was born. <laughs> So, so that means if you have three dogs, you have three tails, and that's how you came up with your name. Is that correct? Three tails RV because they, we don't own the RV; they do. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a cute name. So, three tails RV, and that's the number three. So, guys, remember that. Um, so, the next thing I want to make sure and ask you guys about is now that you've been in your RV for sixteen months. Do you guys miss a house? Or have Sometimes you? I do. Um, more because what we were living in, I didn't have to deal with stairs every day. Ah, uh, yeah. Because you, you, yeah. you mentioned to me you had some uh, back issues, so you're having a little trouble with that, eh? Uh, yeah. Mm. Just a couple issues with back issues. How many surgeries, babe? 
Well, after six surgeries, a case being placed, they're still not going to be right for the rest of my life. Wow. And sometimes the stairs bother me. Yeah. Anything else about not having a house that's um, uh, kind of stands out that you wish you had or or don't miss you have? <laughs> I wish I had our own washer and dryer. We could do that, but we don't have the room for it. Right. Like, really, I don't miss having a house. You said one other thing the other day was having a yard. Yeah. And be able to put it in a backyard. Garden. Yeah. Having a garden with fence yards so the dogs could just run, open the door, and let them go. Well, we went to Camping World yesterday and purchased another uh, gate or play area. So we had one before, and now we've doubled the size of it. So they've got a little bit of room to run around outside when the sun's shining. Yeah. Which, believe it or not, Rob, the sun is shining in Washington State. Oh. <laughs> that's a, You better take a picture okay. of that. <laughs> hey, it started out sun, went to rain, back to sun. So we got a little of all of it today. Yeah. So I guess also guys uh, give you guys the chance to tell me kind of overall what's your future plans? Um, right now our future plans is to go to Missouri. After that, I think we're just going to make it up as we go. That sounds like the best way. And that's starting in fall, right? Yep. Cool. Right on. So and it now uh, uh between the last 16 months, is there anything you guys would have done different to this point that you'd want to pass on uh, with somebody just getting into an RV? More research. <laughs> How so? A little bit, a little bit more selective on the RV that we did purchase. Uh, the people that we bought it from weren't quite straightforward with us on the actual condition of the roof. And that was one of the first big obstacles that we had to clear was the fact that there was um, some excessive damage to the roof. And I had to go back through, rip off most of the stuff that they had put in place and mm-hmm. then reinstall the uh, tape and then seal it all off. So that was one of the biggest issues was that we weren't, we trusted somebody at their word that everything was uh functioning and everything was okay Mm -hmm. and then after doing some research and being in the RV for a while there was lots of cosmetic issues that needed to be addressed immediately that's not an unusual story I've heard that before from other folks is um, you just can't be too careful about buying a used rig and almost all of them I think would agree to a, a real thorough inspection before no matter who you're dealing with seems to be a requirement, and uh, it sounds like you guys would agree with that. Yeah. At the time, we weren't aware of the inspection services that many different individuals would go out and do for yeah. you or some cautious to do it. But that is definitely something you should look at before purchasing an RV. It's actually have a second person, or a second, third, fourth, or fifth person come out and actually take a look at it, look at the different um, systems that are on board, and just, just so you have a better knowledge of what to look for when purchasing one. Agreed. So, uh, me, we look, uh, in Washington State, with the amount of rain that goes on, you'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll know pretty quick opening up some of the cabinets that there is some water damage. But if it was well maintained or maintained enough to, or, and kept under cover, then it's going to be a lot harder to find. Agreed. Now, I mean, yeah, but I think I'd be really worried about buying a rig down, say, Arizona or something where I couldn't prove the fact of whether it had water leaks or not. So, yeah, right. that's the good part about Washington, that's for sure. So I have a... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to... So I got to kind of get this wrapped up real quick because we're running out of time, but you have all the time in the world to... I mean, especially with your last six months going on and, and getting prepared and, and then you have a growing channel and, and a lot of great things happening. So this is your chance, if you guys like to, is is what kind of message, and, and you did something with it just now about the water, but if you had a chance to give a message to others that are 
either already an RVer or, or thinking about becoming an RVer, what kind of things would you like to pass on to them for uh, to make sure that things go smooth for them? Well, I think um, I think our little subtitle thing says it all. Live simple, live free, and enjoy the ride. Keep a sense of humor. <laughs> for sure. Well, that wraps up our interview with Aaron and Lori Jimerson from Three Tails RV. I think uh, there are some folks to watch in the future. They're definitely got a growing channel, producing some very nice videos, very caring and thoughtful people. And when I see people like that, I, I know Sherry and I will bend over backwards to see if we can help them. They've helped us a lot. We urge any of uh, our listeners and some of our other folks that have channels and, and websites to get involved with them. They'll be uh, real team players. So that kind of wraps up our show today at RV Talk Radio. I want to thank you very much for listening. Sherry and I very much appreciate all of you. And please keep the comments coming in, your ideas. If you have products and services you'd like us to represent, Give us a holler. We'll see what we can work out. So, as Sherry and I say, (laughs) what are you waiting for? Thanks for listening. Bye now.